Our next talk is by Tadashi Takinagi. He will tell us about graphic pseudo entropy. Please, 45 minutes. Thank you very much. First, I'd like to thank organizers for inviting me to this very exciting online conference. This is my first time to give a talk in online conference, so it's quite uh, very interesting to me. And uh, so today, I'd like to talk about our forthcoming paper, which we call uh, Holographic Pursued Entropy. This is a kind of generalization of holographic entanglement entropy. And I will give some definition later, and it's for ADS safety, motivated by ADS safety correspondence. And this work is uh, based on the collaboration with Yoshifumi Nakata and Yusuke Taki, Otaro Tamaoka, and Jishawe in YRTP. So let me begin with the introduction. I think there are also many talks about entanglement. And uh, so but let me start with quantum entanglement, because this is a basic uh, key concept of my, related to my talk. And uh, so in quantum mechanics, we have this kind of Entangled state, and typical example is a Bell state. Here, the two parts, A, and we, we have a two system, A and B. This is a scheme, but that they are actually quantum mechanically correlated, like this. So if we measure one of the spin, uh, A is up, then always immediately we know the second spin and vice versa. So measurement of A is strongly correlated with the measurement of B. And we say there is a non-zero quantum entanglement if quantum wave function is not factorized, is not direct product. If they are direct product, there are no correlation. So we say there are no quantum entanglement. But if they are not, then we call there is a quantum entanglement and better state as a maximum quantum entanglement. And we can quantify this uh, entanglement by measuring quantity called entanglement entropy. So this is the best measure for quantum entanglement for pure state, for mixed state, this case is more complicated. I'm not going to mention in this talk. For pure state, this is the best measure of quantum entanglement is known to be entanglement entropy. This is defined from this reduced state matrix. This psi is a total wave function, quantum wave function of pure state. We have A and B. Hilbert space is factorized into A and B. And we trace out B. And then we define so-called a uh, reduced density matrix. And then we can define this von Neumann entropy. Okay, so let me go on. And uh, so now I switch to ADS CFT. So I would like to first introduce two different ways to calculate holographic entanglement entropy in two different settings. First one is a holographic entanglement entropy for static space time. And for this case, we can take a time slice in consistent way. So we, we can focus on static asymptotically radius space time. We just focus on time slice. That means completely Euclidean space. And then we can define minimal area surface. So we have some surface which covers some region A. So we define entanglement entropy by separating region A and region B and define entanglement entropy for A in previous definition. And the entanglement entropy for A is called SA is computed by the minimum area surface, which covers A. So this is a minimum nature picks up particular surface. There are many surfaces which covers A, but we just minimize area. And the minimization is well defined in Euclidean signature, in Euclidean area space time. And this is an anti-dojita space metric. And so gamma A is a minimal area surface, and it's co-dimension two, because it's all entropy. And on the, this time slice, and such that A is boundary of A is the same as boundary of gamma A, this is the surface gamma A. And A, and there are some topological conditions, it's called homologous relations. A and this gamma A is a homologous to each other. So this is the first one, which is only applicable to static space time. Now I would like to think about time dependent space time, Lorentzian time dependent. So in that case, we can apply covariant holographic entanglement entropy formula. And so this wave function is now time dependent, and evolved by Hamiltonian. And you can have some anti-dosita space, which is that means asymptotical area space time, but it's some, with some time dependent, Lorentzian time dependent. That's the case, but still we can talk about time slice at the boundaries, CFT boundary, and we can talk about subsystem A and compute entanglement entropy by just picking up 
not the minimal area, but extremal area, extremal surface. Extremal surface means that we take a variation of area to be zero. Right? We cannot minimize because this is a Lorentzian space time. And if we go to the null direction, so of course area goes to zero. And that, this calculation is not stable. So we just require the variation of area is zero in this calculation. And if, they, if sometime we encounter several discrete solutions, that case we just take a minimum, minimization over several possible choices, some discrete number of choices. And we have same but, uh, uh, topological condition. So, but these are uh, some, uh, these are formula which we know very well and also have a derivation based on the area CFT. And now I'd like to switch to the, our main focus. And namely, so we want to consider some time dependence in Euclidean asymptotically area space time. So this is a one particular, just one particular example. So you can just talk about area safety, but we can insert some number of operators, KB operators. Then we have some shock waves, and this is quite time dependent geometry, but we are talking about Euclidean signals. We just insert operator in Euclidean uh, conformal field theory pass integrals. So we have, maybe you can put three operators, and and below we just put two, so obviously time, time dependent, Euclidean time dependent. And so from this picture, we can take particular time size, Euclidean time tau equals zero here. So actually if it has integral from, from down to tau equals zero, gives some particular state psi, defined by this two operator excitation, but we can think about another pass integral from plus infinity to zero, tau equals zero, and that defines another state. This is defined by three operators, this bar five state. So that way we encounter two different states. This is something new in this uh, Euclidean signal. But nevertheless, uh, anyway, we are talking about asymptotically ADS Euclidean geometry. We can define minimum area surface gamma A. So it is quite natural to ask what's the meaning of this gamma A, this area of gamma A. So it, you can just take the area divided by 4G Newton, like holographic entanglement entropy or Bekenstein Hawking. Form. So this is my, our interest in this talk. So the, uh, but, uh, let me first say the answer to this question. So we can say that actually, so this quantity is like something like entanglement entropy, but different, obviously different, because it involves with two different states. So this is actually written in this way. It's like, it looks like von Neumann entropy, but this tau a bar phi psi is actually transition matrix, reduce the reduced transition matrix. This is a more general than density matrix. So this let, let me precisely say the definition. So we talk about psi and bar phi, right? And we have bura and keto state like this, precisely like this. This is a bura state and keto state. And we, we just take a we take we divide it by the normalization. So the trace of this guy is just one as usual in uh, density matrix. And we take trace over B. So this defines reduced transition matrix. And just take a row log row, like a tau log to tau. So this gives von Neumann-like quantity, and this is a quantity precisely compute this uh, area. So actually this can be, we can easily understand this uh, result from the viewpoint of, just, uh, if we remember the original derivation by Lukowitz and Maldasana by of this uh, holographic entanglement entropy from area CFT, which is basically same similar calculations. And, uh, but here we should be careful that this transition matrix obviously no longer ha Hermitian. So we cannot talk about positive definite eigenvariant and so on. So we have to be very careful about this. But nevertheless, there are some quantum information people who define some, using this kind of uh, reduced, reduced transition matrix, some quantity called conditional entropy. Not, not exactly the same as our quantity, but it's quite interesting to think about this. Okay, so, but I have another comment from quantum information viewpoint. This transition matrix is, so this actually appears in the, when we think about something called post-selection. Post-selection means we start with some side to initial state, and later we just project down to another state. We assume in the product between bar phi and psi is non-zero. Let's assume, in my talk always I'm assuming this, but we can think about this as a kind of final projection, some final state projection, like post-selection. In that case, we can also insert some operator. This can be a Hermitian operator, some physical observable. And then we take a ratio, and this is called actually weak, weak value in quantum information theory. There are also experimental way to 
detect this quantity and introduce by long ago. And uh, so this quantity is actually related to this post selection procedure. And uh, so actually, so what we are thinking about this holography pursued entropy actually can be regarded as in more modern language is a kind of weak value of area operator. So area operator is some operator which defines CFT side in field space, but which measures the area of this uh, minimal surface. So many people discuss this recently, but we can take, usually we take average of A by same state, but here we just talk about off diagonal element. And this is kind of, and we divide by this normalization, and this is precisely this in photograph calculation. Okay, so this is a content of my talk. I just finished the introduction and I will give some basic definition of pursued entropy again, also including Rainy version of this. And then I would like to study the property of this quantity because this is something new. So we'd like to study this quantity in qubit system first. And then come to holography and also conform a theory calculation. So this is a basic of this pursued entropy or Rainy generalization. So consider two quantum states, psi and bar phi and define transition matrix. This is, of course, no longer standard quantum state. This is no longer Hermitian and semi-definite. But anyway, we can always define this from some two quantum state. And we decompose Hilbert space HA times HB, as usual. And then we introduce this reduced density mat reduced trans uh, transition matrix by tracing just over B, and then define this n strain entropy, pursued n strain entropy. So by take, taking, uh, this is the same as uh, if this is tau is if tau is low, then this is a standard range entropy. We just replace it. And then, then we can take n equal one limit uh, of this quantity, and which namely gives some von Neumann version of this pseudo entropy, which I explained just before. So right like this one. This one. So this is a n equal one limit. This is a usual technique in replica method, which is also you use for CFT calculation. And uh, so since this quantity is not quantum state, this is not Hermitian and positive semi-definite, so we have to be careful. And in general, this quantity pursued range entropy is complex value. But as we already mentioned that this in holographic description, always it's real and positive value because it's just area. So mainly we want to focus on that case, but we should be we should keep in mind in general, this is a kind of it's a very exotic quantity. And if we assume a total system, is A is just total system and B is empty, then we can easily see this uh, just without the reduced, just transition matrix have satisfied this algebra. And that means trace tau to the n is also one. And that means no entropy at all for any n. Then the entropy is always zero. So this is, a, I mean, counterpart of what we know very well for entanglement entropy. It's total system is pure, then just total entropy is just zero. And uh, so we, there, are, there are several uh, basic properties, which is very similar to what we know in entanglement entity. So if either psi or phi, phi, bar phi has no entanglement, then all immediately it follows this entropy is zero, general uh, pursued entropy is zero. So this means that some connection to quantum entanglement there. And uh, so we, we have, this is in general complex variable quantity, but if we flip psi and bar phi, then it's complex conjugate. It's very easy to show this. And we know entanglement entropy for pure state is a equals b, and we have some counterpart of this relation in our quantity. And finally, if we set psi equal to bar phi, just diagonal part of this transition matrix, then just end up with just normal entanglement ent entropy or linear entropy. This is obvious from that definition. But here, so now we move on to some more explicit examples. Just, but just before that, we wanna give some general classification of this con behavior of this quantity. So this is a kind of uh, classification, but this uh, big one is that just, we think about all possible quantum state. So general state, just general random state. But uh, next we restrict to the case where this eigenvalues of this matrix tau actually is real or some complex conjugate. That case, there are chance, in particular case, there are chance that all range entropy can be real, real value, real and positive. This is, a, this is still exotic, I'm not going to detail, but the holographic one, which we wanted to talk about, it's in this class, this in the purple class, like B, C, D, E. 
So that means entropy is always positive because it's like a minimal area. And uh, so we can also restrict so that this tau is a Hermitian, Hermitian and a positive definite. This is a quite good, very good class. And that case, as we will see, we have a nice quantum information theoretical interpretation in terms of just number of bell pairs. That is true for, of course, standard entanglement. We're just counting number of bell pairs. This defines also, uh, defines entanglement entropy in quantum information textbook. And we have some similar statement in our, in our pseudo entropy for this class. So this is a rough sketch of classification. And now let me go to more uh, details. So we let's so let me let us focus on this class E. That means this tau A and reduce reduce transition matrix tau A and tau B are both positive definite and Hermitian. And that case, this kind of best property, but still of course non-trivial. I mean psi and buffer are different. It's so different from standard quantum state, which we talk about. It depends on two different quantum states. But we want to argue that case, this pursued entropy actually counts number of dis distillable bell number of bill pairs. And when we think about this kind of postal selection, we start from psi state and end up with buffer state, just projection measurement, or just post selection. And that case, we, if we talk about intermediate state and count number of bell pairs, how many bell pairs appear there, so that average number gives this pursued entropy. More precisely, we take asymptotic limit. This is usual. So we just take an infinite many copy of bell pairs. This is usually we do in quantum information theory. So this is a kind of, just before that, let me talk about, just review about very famous factor about entanglement entropy and based on LOCC procedure. This is a kind of textbook material in quantum information theory. So we just decompose A and B, maybe A sp and B sp, A qubits or B qubit is factorized. And here we, we have in mind A and B are far apart, but they are entangled, but far apart. And that case, well, in experiment, we can do the, some very detailed quantum operation which act locally A or B. A and B are separated to laboratory, so we can act some very fine grained operation, like quantum operation A and B independently. But for A and B are distant, so we can do some classical communication, namely just sending emails or you know, tele making phone call and so on, so the classical information exchange. And these are, this combining these two is called LOCC. And uh, we know entanglement is not increasing under this LOCC, it's always decreasing. And so this is quite, uh, uh, this procedure is tight, I mean, with this uh, quantum ent entanglement. And uh, one basic example of LOCC is quantum teleport teleportation process. So this is a so we act LOCC, but we first we started some psi, I mean some state entangled state between A and B. It's a very complicated entanglement. It, you can take a just generic wave function between A and B. And we, but to stabilize the result, we take a infinitely many copy, M copy of this guy, psi state, and we act this LOCC, which I mentioned. And then we pick up some number of bell pairs. After LOCC, we just, this is a very genuine bell pair, very beautiful, you know, like log two entropy. Uh, bell pairs, and we can we assume we 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 can extract n bell pairs, and that case we define this this ratio n divided by m. So if we talk about just one copy, then n divided by m number of bell pairs we can get, and we know if we take n goes to infinity, this precisely agree with von Neumann entropy. This is a basic very basic theorem in uh, quantum information theory. This is a whole pure state. We started pure state, so we we have some kind of you know similar calculation, we, we want to do something similar for our generalized version of this entanglement, that means, you know, pseudo the entropy. So that case, so in class D, we can always diagonal this way. So this is zero, zero state, this looks like better pair, but this coefficient is generic. And this uh, point is that this angle is different. Theta one, theta two different because psi and bar phi are different states. So that case, this is a transition matrix. And we can calculate this to show the entropy, so we plot it here. Plot it to show the entropy here. So, and this particular, so some general, these angles actually white means just the result is imaginary, so it's not good quantity. But we focus on the case where we have this positive definite entropy, so that means this square and this square. We get this result. And then, so now we go to this kind of argument. So we take a file first, we stick M very large number of copies of psi, and this is just, we can, this is a binomial 
kind of expansion, we just expand into this way. So there are zero, zero sets, but M, so it's like a two M qubits. So this M qubits here and M qubits here, and they are maximally entangled. We decompose this state into maximally entangled state. So this PKA means just this kind of zero one state. So if we P zero K equal one, K, K equal zero, K equal zero means P zero means just the all, all states are zero. That means only possible one, only one possible state. And uh, K equal one means only one of them is a one. Other, other guys are zero. So that means there are M such possibility, right? So if where, where we put one. And that way we have some combination, combination number appears and summation. So that, and then we project, point to that now we act this LOCC and a local operation for A, namely projection measurement for A. So this is just project down to one, this, uh, by, uh, this binomial state, zero, zero, 001 state, projection. We do this projection and we sum of this. That means we end up with this maximally entangled state. So this pi k project this state to this special k uh, labeled by k, this maximally entangled state. And uh, so we, but we can think about summation of a k or possible k that co becomes some complete state. Just if we sum over all k, this is becomes identity. And but we, each k is selected by with some particular period uh, probability pk. So this probability is just defined this way. So we start with psi and do this projection measurement and finally post up selected to power five. And this is a probability. So if we assume this process selection, this is a probability where we have this case maximally entangled state. So this is a probability. And then just we take average, right? PK times this log of a combination is like just not dimension of the silver space of this maximally entangled state. So log of this is just the entropy. So we just take average of all possible consequences. Just then we can do some, we can apply some subtle point approximation and we can prove that precisely disagree with is our definition of this uh, pursued entropy. This guy precisely appears. So that way, for this particular class, we understand some information theoretical origin of this quantity. And uh, so let me also talk about more some uh, some properties from some from different viewpoint. So this is a kind of uh, so we are talking about some local unitary only. So let me start with a two qubit system. This is a very simplest case. Let's assume this. We have always we need to start with psi and bar phi. There are two states, two quantum states, and we act some local unitary A and local unitary B independently. And in that case, for two qubit case, we can always show that finally, final pseudo entropy is always greater than the uh, original entanglement entropy. So psi and bar phi, because they are just locally related, so they have the same entanglement entropy. But they always end up with larger entanglement, uh, larger pursued entropy. So this is what we can uh, especially confirm. But however, but this is only special. We can prove this in analytically, but this is only true for two qubit system actually. So because we are in the end interested in CFT and more larger system, so actually we in general we have an opposite behavior. So this here is an example. This is a, uh, there are four qubits here, right? So there are four qubits. And the first two guys we call A. And second guy, two guys that we call the B. So that case, these two guys are uh, some non-zero overlap, but they are also they have an EPR pair, so better pair, but in different places. A and B are entangled for this guy, and the first guy is uh, another guy is uh, entangled. So this case, both states are maximally entangled log two entropy, but uh, this pursued entropy turned out to be zero. So that way, for larger system, it's very easy that because of this entanglement swapping, if entanglement changes between psi and phi, even though they are both entangled, so this pursued entropy turns out to be very small value. And uh, also something a little bit similar happens for some of your double state. Some of you, this is a some of your double state. And uh, in, let's think about particularly conformal view theory so that we can calculate summer entropy analytically. So that case, actually, so we can talk about similar relation between this entanglement entropy for each state and also pursued entropy. So they are all, uh, they are all described by summer entropy, summer entropy, the beta one or beta two, and uh, this guy, pursued entropy, turned to be beta one plus beta two over two, this average. And we can easily, see, we know that in behavior of some entropy in CFT, this is always small. So this is also 
pressure entropy gets decreased. And we will see some other example of this in ADSLT and so on. Okay, so now we come to uh, holography. So, as uh, are there any question? Because I just finished this quantum mechanical part and just go to ADS safety. Okay, okay. So let me go on. So this is a, a holographic pseudo entropy which I explained just before in the beginning. So this we take as a subsystem A, and we take some minimal surface which covers A. But this is no longer on this some simple time slice because this is time dependent, Euclidean time dependent background. And this area is this this surface is no longer on a simple surface. But so but anyway, we can always define minima of some uh, area. So this is a quite a well defined quantity and it's always positive. And we can confirm basic property of this uh, holographic field entropy. So if you cure, it's just zero because it covers everything. And if you put bar phi and psi, or uh, either of that is not entangled, then it's immediately zero. This actually follows from the description of boundary state of so-called ADS-PCFT uh, duality. And SA and SB also obvious as usual for, or for normal, uh, uh, entanglement entropy, right? A and B. And if there are no obstructions, then it's the same. And subarritivity is also obvious from this picture. But uh, there are some subtle issues that, uh, however, but it's not clear for the strong subjectivity inequality, which is uh, we can prove for standard holographic entanglement entropy. With, but it's not clear this is true for our holographic field entropy. Also, from the viewpoint of this quantum mechanical argument, we can easily find the example where this naive, this strong subjectivity is violated. So it's possible that in holography also it's violated. But uh, so far, our example always satisfies this condition. And we also, we, we should note that this is not, tau A is not a uh, Hermitian conjugate, not Hermitian. So it can be seen explicitly from this trace, right? Trace tau square is not equal to trace tau and tau dagger. This we can easily confirm in photographic calculation. And also we can think about a linear combination of geometry where peop, uh, in photographic entanglement entropy case, we uh, think about something called linearity property. And there's this linearity property also true here in this pursuit uh, entropy, but we can easily, in this case, find easy find example where strong subjectivity is violated in this generalized uh, prescription of this taking linear combination. Okay, so now, because anyway, this is a quite, uh, definition is just abstract, so it's good to check with some examples. I think it's a best, uh, a simplest example will probably Jaina solution. And Jaina solution is a kind of perturbation of anti-Doshita space, and which is dual to perturbation of CFT. And we focus on ADS3 CFT2 constructed by these people. And uh, so we take a 2D CFT and we take a perturbation by exact minor operator O. And uh, so that some earlier time, uh, this is a Euclidean time, but minus infinity to zero, we have this perturbation. And uh, later time, tau zero to infinity, we have this another perturbation with different coefficient phi plus. And of this phi, it's dual to scalar, because this is a scalar operator. And this is a massless scalar, because it's exactly marginal. And this is somehow solution in this uh, Einstein gravity, Einstein ADS3 gravity coupled to massless scalar. Right? So on the psi, this uh, scalar field value changes depending on the position, and also depending on the either side of the boundary. Like, we have a kink-like solution. And this is express solution, and we can think about this calculation of this pursued entropy, holographic pursued entropy by just computing minimum area. So we just computed the tau equals zero here. Because it's tau equals zero is just an interface between these two different uh, perturbation. So this defined one quantum state, and this another quantum state defined by this lower passing field. So this is just minimal surface is very familiar to uh, standard example. And uh, so, we, but the point is that coefficient changes, coefficient changes, and uh, because of this gamma parameter, gamma, this gamma is dual to this deformation parameter, psi plus. And uh, so we can take uh, some small gamma, that means perturbation, and always negative. And this, neg so, uh, this is also something I agree with what I mentioned before. So in general, larger system, the pursued entropy somehow decreasing under uh, non-trivial interaction. 
And uh, this, we can also calculate this contribution by doing some replicatoric, replica calculation in CFT side, this CFT perturbation, and we can reproduce this also scale minus negative contribution, and which is proportional to log wear. So this is a quite uh, usual behavior, log wear, but it's coefficient changes. Okay. And then, so these are uh, example. Okay, so these are example of this, uh, simplest example of this holographic pseudo entropy, but now I go to another example. So this is about some locally excited state. So, but let me, before we go to the uh, uh, holographic CFT, let me talk on the uh, locally excited state in free CFT. So this is a definition of this local excited state. So we have some vacuum state and we act vacuum state by local operator O and insert it to some particular location X tau. This is a kind of, you can imagine this is a two dimensional seat and we are talking of two dimensional conformal theory. And this is a subsystem A to define the just density matrix and we act local operator uh, some here. So this defines side state and the bar phi state defines the opposite passive integral from plus infinity and that's related to O2. O2 means this operator, O1 is this operator and the location is defined. If we, well, usually when we talk about excited state and entanglement entropy, we take the same location, right? Because we want the same state, psi, psi. That means we should insert this operator in the same position, but now we change the location. And this, but they, again, so this is a kind of standard technique that we can use some replicatory. So we have some NC, and that computes this trace low, log, uh, trace to the tau to the nth power, and uh, test with each other along this cut called A. Okay, this is sigma. And after com combining all seat, we get this n, n seated Riemann surface, which we call sigma n. But the point is that we have some two n insertion of these local operators. And then what the quantity which we are interested in is the difference between this uh, pseudo entropy and ground state contribution. And uh, because both are you be divergent and logarithmically divergent, or more generally, they, both of them have area row divergence. But if we take this difference, we get a finite result and we have some uh, universal result which we can uh, compare. And this for simplicity, we would like to focus on this uh, second Rennie version of this pseudo entropy, though we can generalize to any n later. And that case, this delta SA2, this is the entropy change, should entropy change for n equal to two is just written in terms of four-point function. And we can just rewrite write this four-point function in terms of conformal block and we can solve this calculation. And especially we take this operator O to be this com combination of free scalar CFT. We take just free, free CFT and so that we have a simple calculation. But this actually, if we just keep only one of them, the result is trivial. All results are just vanishing. Delta S is always zero. This is because it's too trivial, but if we add some exponential minus I phi, this is much like bell pair. So you, because of the, because the, this is because uh, we have, we can decompose the phi, this is scalar phi into left moving part and right moving part. Then this a plus sign means up spin, up spin. Left part is up and right moving up. And the minus sign means left, uh, left moving down and the right moving also down. That way we get a bell pair. So non-trivial entanglement is created locally created. And we perform this conformal map, you know, this n seat conformal map. We want to map this n seat partition function in terms of just partition function on a single seat. And that can, we can do by using this conformal mapping. And then we obtain this delta SA2 is turned out to be this quantity. The eta is a cross ratio. And obviously this is always inside of this is always greater than, as smaller than one, that means log of this is negative. Always end up with a negative uh, contribution to the pseudo entropy. So here is a, a explicit plot for this. So this is, uh, so from here we had the, we take some subsystem A here and in tower. And first one, first picture, we put some same location, but different time, Euclidean time. So different Euclidean time means the psi and the bar phi state is different. And this is a plot when we change the tau, right? 
tau equals 0 0.1, that means this guy is very close to this guy, and the other guys are far apart. In that case, we have a very sharp dip. This dip appears when this center of mass is precisely 10, that means this end point precisely close, gets closer to O1. So we find definite tendency that one of the end point of subsystem is get closer to the insertion of operator, we have a very negative contribution. And this, we want to argue, we, are, we can interpret this because uh, if we remember the previous, my argument in quantum system, that this pursued entropy is decreased when we have entanglement swapping. If we entanglement, so here also same thing happens. If we act this operator, so originally, originally ground state of the state actually entangled between these two regions, so two parts, right, across this boundary of A, right? So here, this point and this outside point are entangled just across this end point of A. But this entanglement now swapped into entanglement of this operator. This is, as I mentioned, this operator is a bell pair. So there are another entanglement. So these two guys are swapped. So because of that, we have very large dip here. And similar also true for when we change the location of O1 and O2. So this, there are now four peaks because these points can collide with this guy or collide with this guy. And at this point also can collide with this guy and this guy. So that way we have a, a more opportunity to get uh, this decreased behavior. So anyway, this decrease in probability is come from this entanglement swapping behavior, which I explained. So this is a free field, free field calculation. So now we switch to uh, calculation in holography. This is a holographic result. It's the same setup, essentially se almost identical setup. And here, so we only appropriate uh, only one part. This deep, this so it appears when this operator gets closer to the end point. This is the same as previous one, this free field same. But the new thing in holography, we have some positive contribution when this excitation is come to the middle of this subsystem A. This is a special to holographic type, holographic contribution. And I think this is related to chaotic nature of holographic CFT. This is a much simpler because this is a non-chaotic, just integrable uh, CFT. So this is a holographic calculation, and we can just we can compute this by just computing this uh, geodesic length in this backup. <laughs> okay, so and uh, before I'm uh, closing this talk, but uh, let me mention also one more topic that the mixed state generalization. So 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 far we actually assumed uh, state is always pure, right? Psi and bar phi is always pure state. But what about if we start from the mixed state? And that's namely, so we can start from some mixed state that a transition matrix or just some reduced uh, transition matrix for AB is mixed, uh, defined by mixed matrix, mixed state, like this. But nevertheless, so even though we started mixed state, there are some technique to change into pure state. This is called purification, and there are infinitely many different purification. And uh, there are many ways to define some mixed state version of entanglement entropy. But here we particularly focus on this something called reflected entropy, introduced by Dutta and Frog and other people. And then, so started by other people. And then, so that, that one is actually, we can just rely this operator in terms of kind of a wave function, just doubling the Hilbert space. And then, so we can talk about, we can rely this operator in terms of a single wave function. And the tau, this tau is originally matrix, but changes into some state, and tau dagger also another state. We can define this quantity, and we can just talk about this uh, pursued entropy for this state. So this is the definition, our definition of the pursued reflective entropy. And if we define this way, so we can show that actually this turns out to have a simple holographic dual, and namely, so we talk about A and B as a subsystem of this total system, so this row AB and the tau AB is related to this subsystem. And we can talk about the minimal surface which covers A and B to compute SAB, SAB, entanglement entropy, tau AB, also this uh, the entropy for AB. And this is a minimal surface for that. And we can talk about minimum cross section, and this is a, called entanglement wedge cross section. Just entanglement cross section is uh, argued by uh, our work that uh, is related to quantity called uh, 
entanglement of purification, but the twice of this guy is also turns out to be the quantity called reflective entropy. And we have a, a different relation between this cross section in this time dependent to Euclidean asymptotic radius space. And twice of that cross section is equal to this generalized, this time pursued reflective entropy. This is a kind of mixed state version of this our statement. Okay, so these are basically all of my talk. Let me summarize my conclusion. So the main claim of this talk is that pursued entropy is equal to the area of minimal surface in Euclidean asymptotically ADS space time with time dependence, Euclidean time dependence. And we have some, uh, so we, we notice that this is in general complex variant. We have to be careful whether that's really sensible or not. But for if we restrict it to holographic context, actually it turned out to be non-negative and positive it has a very nice property. And the one reason for this is definitely, so Euclidean pass integral to define this quantity is positive value. Euclidean pass integral, or just we, I, I mean, use some, any positive quantity and we're assuming positive source. So this, uh, but it may be, so holography also put some further constraint for that. It's quite interesting to study this in future. And also, uh, to show the entropy for non-exotic states for some, some property, some special, uh, Transition matrix, which behaves nicely, which also includes example of holography. Actually, we have some nice quantum information, theoretical understanding, but just number of, counting number of bare pairs in the inter intermediate states of this post section. And what the natural question is, what about more general state? And what's the meaning of this complex variant? It's quite an interesting future problem. And finally, so this, we find some express calculation from express calculation that tendency, we find the tendency that pursued entropy tend to decrease in conformal fusory calculation due to entanglement swapping. But however, we find only for, for free CFT, we, we only have this negative contribution, but for holographic CFT, so chaotic CFT, we find some positive contribution. So that's so different and it's probably related to the holographic nature. And we can see, understand, maybe we have some better understanding by looking up ADS CFT correspondent. Ah, I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much for your very interesting and instructive talk. Please, questions. Uh, hi, Tadashi. I have a small question. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, what is the I mean, can you clarify on the example with Janus? What's the difference with, between uh, entanglement entropy? It's one. Uh, I mean, if okay, you okay. when you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but anyway, so this is a Euclidean time dependent background, right? And uh -huh. we cannot under, so we can compute. We can define this minimal surface. We can compute it like this. But this is not related. Uh, we cannot interpret this in terms of holographic entanglement entropy because. This, we, if we talk about this particular t tau equals zero state, it's, it's not a single state. It's like we can define mm -hmm. psi state here, and it's a bar phi state, like this one. And this is not, not standard and quantum, I mean, not standard quantum state. It's not quantum state, actually. So it's kind mm -hmm, of mm -hmm, defined mm -hmm. by two different quantum states. It's like a more generalized transition matrix. This is like a transition between, uh, this is like a transition amplitude or something like this. I mean, genus, that's because right, it's genus. That's right, that's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Because it's uh, not the low range, but this is a, a Euclidean signature. And uh, also but for the, example. Yes? Uh, but for example, for a finite temperature uh, CFT2, uh, will this make some difference or not? So the final temperature. So that, yeah, for example, if you take some, if you take some uh, canonical examples, for example, BTZ black hole or yeah, yeah, that case like that. for this to define this uh, time depend not the real time dependence. We, we start with some temperature beta one, and end up with beta two. So you have a different temperature. In that case we have of course obviously different state, and we can define this quantity in an effective way. And then that gives this transition matrix and push you the entropy. It's not not so, uh, not so you need I mean so I mean so you need some uh, explicit strong dependence on Euclidean time. So for Euclidean time to be stressed that it is Euclidean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Euclidean time dependence. And once you have I mean, a Euclidean time dependence, you you cannot understand it, uh, it, it in terms of just single state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Okay. And what is the interpretation in terms of surface state duality? Do you have one or or, or C circuit path integral? Do you have some interpretation? Hmm. Okay, that's kind of that, that's a very interesting question. But I hmm. Okay, but uh, I think that case probably. Sorry, this should. So in these pictures, I think this surface is related, anyway, this surface is related to these two different states. And I think we should understand that way. So it's, it's this, state, this surface and some associated with some this transition matrix, these this two guys. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I think that's okay, quite an interesting you. future problem. Yeah, that's good. But I, I haven't thought so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, more questions? I, I have a question. So Tadashi, yes. uh, uh, hi. regarded as a matrix, uh, this tau A, the reduced tau A, does it yes, always, yes. Uh, is it always diagonalizable or? Ah, no, no, not necessarily. Not, necessarily. The composition? Not, necessarily. No, not, not always. Not always. But we can always define eigenvalue by, I mean, Jordan-like form. So does it have mm, but, uh, that... it's not, not always uh, just stand I mean, we cannot uh, diagonalize it by unitary for example it's not how about, a, how about a singular value decomposition uh, singular value decomposition only possible for pure state like, like this is always but oh. we cannot we cannot uh, diagonalize at the same time by Schmidt decomposition oh, I see okay uh, so it's it, it's complicated But uh, yeah, in, in replicatory, we can just need to calculate this power of this matrix, and that is very different in okay. many cases. More questions? Yeah. Hi, Tadashi. Thanks for the really nice talk. Uh, hi. Um, so hi. I had a question about um, what you said, that the Euclidean path integral is real. So, so in ADS-CFT, in some sense, it actually makes more sense to consider complex sources. Because uh -huh. if you want to prepare yeah, okay. arbitrary initial uh -huh. Lorentzian data, you actually need yeah, both real. I agree. Uh, so if we start, to, if we are interested, interested in some quantity in Lorentzian signature, then yeah, definitely we should put imaginary value. That's I agree. But uh, just, just uh, I have Im just I'm so about Euclidean partition function, and uh, with real source, and that case uh, we, we fit in this class. But once we take a uh, yeah analytical continuation of this imaginary value like car black hole and that way, then. Of course, obviously we encounter this imaginary, many imaginary, but also this transition matrix has some imaginary, uh, probably some eigenvalue, and also entropy can be imaginary, I think. I see. So you would just want to restrict uh, the Euclidean path integrals with purely real sources, um, yeah. even though that won't describe the most general overlap between two different holographic states. Yeah, I think so. I see. Thanks. I have a question. Yeah. Um, so it seems that in this definition, it's it's not well defined if the two states are orthogonal. Ah, that's right. That's true. Uh, is you understand the reason? Yeah. yeah. Also, it's also obvious from this picture of holography that we start the psi and the phi and the test each other. And if this inner product is zero, then there are no geometry. Also here, we cannot connect by them by some ADS geometry. Also, yeah, so this, I mean, zero in our product means also we don't have a geometry. So th th that's kind of, I mean, I agree with this too. But I don't know how to do this. If we, anyway, we, if we are just interested in zero in our product state, then how can we compute this in it, it It seems difficult. Okay. And um, since you can have negative eigenvalues, um, one could also compute something like a negativity, you know? Uh, yeah, ne but ne negative, mm, okay, yeah, 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 we can define some sort of like index like quantity, also a negativity counts number with, yeah, partial transposition, some negative. Yeah, but uh, also this quantity can be complex, so that's a little more kind of, we, we, we need to take into more broad effects, so, yeah, it's kind of interesting, but I, I don't come up with some simple answer to that. Mm -hmm. well, maybe we should restrict just the real value 
case of this quantity, and then of course we can pick up negative eigen number of negative eigenvalues. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't see any clear geometrical interpretation by, for example, from holography and so on. But uh, yeah, but it sounds interesting the direction. Thank you. For um, equality of A and B in entropies for density matrices uh, is mm -hmm. because the spectra of density matrices coincide. Is it similar to tau A and tau B? Uh, yeah, but that's, we cannot talk about some spectrum because we cannot diagonalize this. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, but so, and, and, if, and if we can, so uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, you can talk about the again, but I think again, but is the same. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, but uh, there are off diagonal elements. Uh -huh. Okay. More questions? We have a few minutes for last questions. I would say. If no more questions, let's thank Tadash once again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your very interesting talk. Ah,